Hello and welcome to Gold to Heat. I'm Dominic. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guide to punch, chop, and kick your way through the greatest era of action movies. You will notice there is a name missing there. <laughs> uh, he is not joining us for this episode. It's been a long time since we've been down a host, whether it be you or John. I've never missed one. So yeah, we couldn't make it without you. You're the man behind the magic. We can't make it without you. So if you were gone, there'd just be no episode. Yeah, I, I took some time off for, for being sick, I think. And then John took some time off for being sick, said, too, or yeah, right, something like that. Before. Yeah, that's pretty much the only time we've ever, we ever had a host down. So we're only a two-person crew for this week's episode. For the record, John is not fired. No, he no, is no, still no, no. on the show. Yeah. He's just off for this episode. If you've listened to the show for a while, you know that he's in the landscaping business. Now, if you know this, but things grow in the summertime. <laughs> Quite busy in the summer. <laughs> he gets very busy during the growing season. Also, it's just side note, it's been we live in here in Seattle now and it's freaking hot. Hot for and us. We lived in Phoenix before, <laughs> so we get like 190 degrees here. It is hot. But we're pumped. We usually had pumped on the air conditioning. We don't have that here. So. No, no, we don't have. We have a couple of fans. <laughs> and an air conditioning that's older than our oldest child. That fell out of the window. <laughs> it's quite dented. <laughs> so it's summertime. John's busy with landscaping. He's also moving. We moved earlier in the spring or early summer back here to Seattle. I talked about before. John is not moving. He's not moving across the, the entire continent like what me and Melissa did. <laughs> he's just moving a couple towns over. But he's in the process of moving, plus being busy at work. So we're giving John a, a little vacation mm -hmm. away from the show. That way he can get all of his stuff done. He will be back because we still have to finish our season. We only have a few movies to go, by the way. Three movies left in our competition for the greatest karate city. We have Angel Town, which is going to be a stinker. That's going to be... <laughs> Can't be any worse than Deadly Bet. <laughs> and then we have Lone Wolf McQuaid. Chuck Norris can, can't be a stinker, <laughs> oh, which we know is not a stinker. Connection. No, that cannot wait. But we figured this was a great time to do, since Sean is out, to do a You Should Watch It. We've done a few of these so far in this season. These are a ton of fun to do because they can be off the beaten path. They can be something different that we've never talked about before in the podcast. Last time, Chud, which is now just a recurring thing that comes up in our <laughs> conversations. Anything that's mysterious, it could be a Chud. It's got to be a Chud or a Chud Wang. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I see something gross, I'm like, that might be a butt of Chud. <laughs> <laughs> but this one's not going to be any surprise why we chose this one for you should watch it. Because we've already mentioned it at, at least a handful of times in this season. Is the fantastic, amazing unforgettable action movie <laughs> never too young to die which originally premiered on june 13th 1986 it is directed by gail bettman who has no wikipedia there's like a few weeks in a row that we have well you know <laughs> no. after you made that movie <laughs> might not make wikipedia <laughs> it is written and produced and executive produced by stephen paul now man two first names <laughs> First of all, <laughs> two first names. That's promising. <laughs> he produces a ton of movies. And I'm sorry I didn't write down the name of his production company, but he does produce a ton of movies. He continues to produce, still very active in Hollywood. Everything from Baby Geniuses, the movies and the TV shows, Bratz the movie. Okay. Rambo Last Blood. Oh, okay. And Ghost Rider. Wow, he's got a very varied <laughs> <laughs> variety of things from brats like the dolls, brats. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To to la to Rambo Last Blood. <laughs> <laughs> that might have something to do with why that movie was the way it was. <laughs> also, like I'm imagining a merged universe <laughs> where, where brats... baby geniuses and brats are in the Rambo universe. Yeah, I don't think baby geniuses and brats could be in the same universe. Either. <laughs> We've talked about this movie a bunch so far this season because Melissa and I have watched it, but John has not. We yes. watched it on our own. Because that's just what we do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we just watch obscure movies, movies. <laughs> obscure do. action movies. <laughs> so we watched it, loved it. John hasn't watched it yet. We were trying to figure out a way to do it. You should watch it for Never Too Young to Die and get John to watch it. But then, you know, we had this opportunity where John's out and then we can talk about it. We movie. can just talk about it and we got to watch it again. So we're good. And what is there not to like? Because I'm just going to hit the 
cast right off the top and I we don't have a deep dive like John does for the cast or for the music because John's out and I don't feel like doing his job. <laughs> no way that I'm willing to spend the incalculable number of hours that he does yeah, exactly. on finding out all the facts. We don't have enough notebooks for it. <laughs> <laughs> but this movie has three big stars. It has Gene Simmons as a very special character in he the movie. He is the villain. The villain. A super villain at that. I would say Ragnar and Carruthers. He's oh two yeah, people. I did forget that he is two people. Well, technically Ragnar is Carruthers and Carruthers is Ragnar, so technically it's just one person. But he's also male and female, which they point out a lot in this yes, movie. Yes, they do. Yes. And when it comes to the end of the movie, they say some very questionable things. About yeah, that doesn't hold up so well. No, my overtime on that part of it, but <laughs> no, no. So this Gene, it's not surprising it's played by Gene Simmons then. No, not <laughs> at all. <laughs> oh, and then there's John Stamos. Very young. A very young John Stamos. He, you know, I'm tell a little story here. I, my biggest memory of John Stamos isn't, I guess he was in Full House. But remember the episode where they had Full House and then they had hyped that immediately after the episode they were going to play his music video? Yeah, of course I do. I remember, and I stayed up to, like, not stayed up, but, like, I stayed to watch the You music stayed video. up to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Did you have John Samos' album? No, I did not. Dang. But I did watch the music video just to see what it was. I remember that. I watched, I, I didn't even watch Full House, but I was like, John Samos has got a music video? <laughs> because I am a fan of John Samos. I appreciate him as a man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the only things I know about John Stamos, Full House, Rebecca Romaine, and that one music video. <laughs> End of list that I know about John Stamos. End of list, that's it. <laughs> it. We've had Gene Simmons in a You Should Watch It already this season because he was in Red Surf. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, he was. And so now we got John Stamos. John Stamos, not a repeat. We haven't had any other John Stamos movies. Is he in any other movies? That's a serious question. That is a real serious question because I don't know. <laughs> I know. Obviously, he's done a lot of TV. I don't know. Um, <laughs> John? No, I'm just kidding. Are you out there, John Stamos? Answer that question for me. <laughs> and then we got Vanity. Okay, yeah. And she, we just had her. Yeah, obviously. So this is why we don't need to do the... Um, no, we don't need to redo the... The starring roll call on this, because John's actually already talked yeah, about it. Yeah, he's already yeah, covered it. We people. can't do it as good as he does it, so <laughs> we're good. <laughs> That's where they get you, too, is that when you're scrolling through a movie, say on Amazon, you're like trying to find something to watch, and you see this movie called Never See Any Guy. Like, hmm, whatever. like, yeah, whatever, it's, it's probably going to be okay. And then you see on the cover, you see Gene Simmons, John Sam, also in Vanity. You're like, okay, I got to watch it. <laughs> then you read the description. <laughs> pony, wait a minute, pony motorcycles? <laughs> <laughs> horse motorcycles and this movie what i love about it normally it's a bad thing where they can't make up their mind what kind of movie it is is it a mobster movie is it a cult movie is it like a crime Max? or is a it, drama yeah. or, this yeah. movie cannot figure out what it is no because there are some portions of it where it's like supposed to be like kind of campy comedy and which is what i think they're trying to do with gene simmons character he's supposed to be a little bit of comedy but he's also like He's a super villain. Like, he's very menacing and he will just cut you with his long fingernail right in your throat. <laughs> but yeah, but then also it's like, but it's an action movie. To watch the trailer, it was like an action packed thriller. I'm like, thriller? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that I would go with that, but okay. <laughs> and that gets us right into the opening of this movie because we talked about Simmons and his long fingernail. He calls this group of people little turd balls so well i mean that's a pretty accurate <laughs> name for the people that are in his crew his crew what i can't figure out throughout this entire movie is their their plan and it's not to say their plan i know they're going to use this disc they're going to use it to hack into la's water supply or wherever they live i think it's i LA. think it's la but yeah Oh, yeah, because they have to go out to Ohio. yeah it's today. it's definitely like los angeles area so they're going to use this disc to hack into the L.A. water supply and then poison the water supply, which will then poison all the people downstream from there. So, yeah, what I think what it is is they talk about it, and I caught it because I have family members that work, worked there. They say that they're going to hack the power plant, like the new, the, the Diablo Canyon plant, oh, and yeah. they're going to leak. That's right, because it's in SLO, mm -hmm. not in L.A. Not in L.A., yeah. So they're going to leak radioactive stuff into the water, and that's how they're going to do it. Ah, okay. And that disc has like some formula that does it. You just put it in it and it does it for it. So my question is on the plot. The plot, okay, that's extreme villain. 
they're going to do that. I mean, that went a place you didn't think it was going to go when you first saw Gene Simmons, right? <laughs> He's waiting Especially for a disc. What dressed up as. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What his costume is in this. But that he trusts that crew of people to pull this off. I know they are some of the weird. <laughs> They are the dumbest, the dumb. people. They're so dumb. It's like <laughs> that will be the only thing. It doesn't. They don't fit. I feel like they don't fit Gene Simmons, like his character, because they look like they look like they were like thrown off of the set of Mad Max, mm, right? Mm-hmm, they mm-hmm. look like they're like they just drove out of the Thunderdome, and here they show up. Like, <laughs> and he's just. I mean, yeah, I, I know he's supposed to be like extravagant and like over the top, but he's not that over the top. They're like he's a performer. Mm-hmm. You know, he's a singer. He's a he's a performer. They just look like guys that got out of a trash can and came and drove on a motorcycle. Because <laughs> they're supposed to be punk. Oh yeah, that's right. True. They yeah. got the motorcycles true. and the jeans, and they have pony motorcycle. They have motorcycles <laughs> that look like horses' heads. Just, that's what we keep talking. If we keep talking about pony cycles, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, they have a mm-hmm. shell on them. Yeah, to that make look, them look, look like, like a horse. they're riding not just a horse, like a merry-go-round horse. Yeah, like a show, like a showy merry-go-round horse yep mm-hmm. that's their motorcycles that's this game yep <laughs> <laughs> they torture some lady and she gives away that it's stargrove that has the ram k disc that ragnar is looking for stargrove is a secret agent yes not stargrove don't stay most but mr stargrove senior Star- <laughs> senior stargrove his dad his dad is a secret agent we talked about this a lot. We go to the school where we finally meet John Stamos. I'm just going to call him Stargrove. His name's Lance. So I'm just going to refer to him as the Stargrove. There's Stargrove and then there's Mr. Stargrove. <laughs> <laughs> we go to the school. He is practicing his gymnastics. Mm-hmm. He's just jumping on a trampoline. Yes. At the same time, there's other gymnastics things happening and two people wrestling. So I think it was just supposed to be like PE class and he was just doing his own thing. Like jumping on the trampoline but yeah, why would you that's doing any flips or anything no no and the guy keeps being like go yeah you can do it yeah and i'm like okay wait he's just jumping high on a trampoline like he's not doing anything special maybe i don't understand gymnastics or something i don't know <laughs> the whole time there is a song playing that's just the the chorus is Star it's fantastic really it is for music <laughs> the song was explicitly written for this character uh-huh. that includes his name in the song and they play the entire <laughs> yes. song the intro to the movie is very long because they are playing that <laughs> <laughs> that song through the whole po- and i will say that it is kind of surprising that maybe they couldn't get him to sing it but that jane simmons didn't sing the song i mean technically they could have got john samos to sing the song too but technically yeah <laughs> i mean or vanity oh yeah they, but like they didn't have there was the, no vanity the music in there hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they played the entire thing beginning to end like the opening all the way through yes. the song until it ends when it finally ends that's when the scene is about to move on <laughs> and it is you're right it's an amazing song about the man stargrove yeah i mean it's just literally about him <laughs> Now on to my question about the dad, who is supposed to come to his great gymnastics meet that's going to happen for the parents' night. Yes. Like, parents' night's going to happen at the school because he's at, like, a boarding school or something I think like he's that. at, like, a boarding high school. We went back back and forth if it was college or high school, and we did discover in reading the Wikipedia page, because <laughs> that's how bad it was, that uh, it's a high school. And, yeah, it's like a boarding school. And he's, I don't know if he's supposed to come or not. I think he just said that. He was like, I think my, yeah, my dad's coming. And they're like, oh, my God, your dad's coming? The dad keeps checking his watch. Oh, he knows so maybe. He's supposed to get there. But then he doesn't. He's like, oh, shit, I'm going to be late. Ah, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> he's a secret agent. He got time for his kid's gymnastics <laughs> meet. <laughs> so question on the secret agent dad why does he have an english accent um i think the better question is why is he not a good secret agent (laughs) in that scene at the dam (laughs) carruthers betrays him shoots his buddy tries to kill mr stargrove mr stargrove fights him off and carruthers just disappears into the dam and mr stargrove goes damn that was crazy well we should keep going yeah, why didn't you not think that this was weird? Carruthers should just went against you. Oh, well, he'll be fine. <laughs> I'm sure this isn't a trap. He won't come back. He's gone now. He left. <laughs> of course, it leads to then Ragnar being there and all of his goons. Uh, I mean, of course, this is going to make to- total sense. They hop down. Ragnar's there and saw all his goons. He busts out his bulletproof umbrella. <laughs> They're able to <laughs> protect themselves while one escapes. 
but Carruther, not Carruthers, Mr. Sargrove gets captured, and then in a shootout, Mr. Sargrove gets killed. Yes. All that makes All sense. while poor John Samos is doing his actual gymnastics meet, and what at the moment when his father is shot, he feels, he it. feels it in his body, and and baby Sargrove falls off, <laughs> <laughs> falls off the beam or whatever. He's, I don't remember actually. The rings of the ring, were. yeah, and falls right in his face, and he's like. <laughs> And then they flash to the funeral. <laughs> now, in this scene, you get Ragnar and you get Brother. This is the second time that we've watched this movie. But we have to admit, the first time, we did not know that Carruthers was Gene Simmons. But I did remember I asked you, I'm like, why is that guy got a weird, like, hair going on his face? And, like, I questioned it and we're like, oh, whatever. Why does that guy it's look so makeup. weird? It's a B movie. Yeah, it's that's got bad exactly. <laughs> it wasn't until later on in the movie that I realized, I was like, oh, that's totally <laughs> Gene Simmons. <laughs> so, of course, at the funeral, John Sims or Stargrove finds out that his dad was rich, was not who he thought he was, and had a farm out in Ohio. He's like, a farm? He goes, yeah, he left you all the money in the farm. What farm? <laughs> this is, if this movie isn't silly enough for you up to this point, we're going to go out to the farm where Vanity is, and she just, she lived there? Yeah, she lives there. So she's out riding the horses and stuff? Yeah. But they're armed to the gills, just in case anyone tries to attack, so it's kind of a funky setup that they have out there. It's like a fortress or something. It's got, like, secret, like, hideaways and stuff like that. Yeah, so she's riding the horse, and then unprovoked, just gets attacked by Ragnar's goons. Yeah, the gooniest of all of them. <laughs> he's got some like sideways looking mohawk, and he's wearing no shirt. He looks like Conan the Barbarian. He looks with... like something out of Mortal Kombat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he busts into the stable while she's in there with the horse, like combing the horse, and then she goes on this revolving door. And <laughs> The star grove comes in and distracts her. Yeah, because he decides he to go take a look at his farm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he decides at that perfect time to go take a look at the farm that he now owns. She lived at this farm, and he's never met her. He doesn't know her. He just figures she's one of his dad's floozies. That's what he calls her. He's like, oh, she's just one of the many women my father has. Comes out there. She's being attacked. He's like, what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> then she takes off her clothes. Yeah. She's in her underwear. He's a teenage boy. It's kind of creepy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so in the beginning when he's at his school and they're doing that PE stuff, like, oh, this is supposed to be college. It's makes it really weird that they're doing this. And then he realized later, like, no, he's got to be in high school. Then the rest of the movie gets really weird. Yeah, because if he's <laughs> in high school and she's clearly an adult. Also, did she sleep with his dad? Because that's I mean, kind of gross. To have. Yeah, so she just likes to double dip in the oh, family. Oh, okay, that's right. <laughs> The, the dad doesn't have any pictures of Dan. He has pictures of all the other floozies that he's been with. Yeah. But and he, none of Dan. And that's what Baby Stargrove, <laughs> I'm going to call him that. <laughs> he asks, like, well, where's the pictures of you? You're not in here with all my dad's other women. She goes, I'm not like those other women. He saved my life. And he left me a farm. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> so then she goes out to talk to Carruthers because she's still... No, thinks that Carruthers is clean because the only person that knows is dead. Yeah. Which I have written in my notes that he looks like a wax figure of Dr. Ruth. He does. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Dr. Ruth, but... <laughs> Danjo takes off to go to the incinerator bar, and she makes that to sound like she's going to go talk to Ragnar, but she's just going to go observe his show. Yeah, I think she was just going to, like, spy or something. But she doesn't... The bar that she goes to, she stands out. Like, yes. like she first of all, she orders a Bloody Mary. <laughs> <laughs> and a cigar. And a cigar. And she's not dressed the same as everyone else. Everyone else is dressed like Ragnar's like team or crew or people. And she's dressed like she's going to like a disco nightclub or something. Or she actually she's dressed like she's gonna perform at the nightclub or something. Mm -hmm. And he is dressed in his best Don Johnson impersonation. Yes, he is. He follows Even her. down to the hair. Yes. Down like to the hair. Yes, the, the the big bullet. Yes. DJ with the big bullet, not mm -hmm. the early years where it's, it's really short on the sides, but the big poofy one. Yes. That's John Samuel's <laughs> hair that he's got going Yeah, so on. he follows her. Even if she's like, you shouldn't come. It's too dangerous for you. You're just a baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, he follows her anyway on his dirt bike or whatever he's driving. <laughs> <laughs> Goes in with her. He sticks out like a sore thumb because he doesn't belong there. <laughs> They watch Ragnar's show. And then he tries to go to talk to Ragnar and plant this bug mm -hmm. in Ragnar's room. Ragnar, who deals with international super spies all day long. He knows exactly who he is and he tries to trip him up. He, he says his name. He shouts his name, Sargo. <laughs> and then 
baby star girl was like, am I supposed to know who that is? I don't know who that is. I'm just a really big fan. Can you sign this for me? And then he tries to plant a bug and leaves. But of course, Ragnar's He's a professional. I want to know how John Samuels got out of getting a tongue in the mouth, but Vanity didn't. I know, poor Vanity. Yeah, I felt really bad for her at the end of the movie, but she has to deal with that. John Samuels should have got a tongue in the mouth right in that scene when he was in there saying he was his biggest fan. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> More horsey bikes. Yep. Mortal Kombat guy plants a bomb on his motorcycle, which ends up blowing up one of his buddies and not actually blow up Stargrove, and Stargrove's bug is found. So nothing is working out. He goes... This is where we were really confused because he leaves from there, goes running into his roommate, his high school friend's high school roommate, roommate and says, I need to go. He grabs or he leaves the Ram K disc he there. Lives, I don't know where he got the disc. Where does he get it? I think it was in the house. They find it in the house somewhere in like in one of his dad's like studies or something. He finds it and then, then he takes it to his best friend who's also not, this is not, not the best representation but he's also very good at technology things <laughs> he's good on the computer he can build things and so he'd be losing the disc and basically tells him like find out what's on this thing i gotta go and then takes his friend's motorcycle yes and then drives back to where she's at then immediately goes into this chase scene it was nighttime now it's broad daylight she's driving around in a convertible he comes up behind her baby stargo comes up behind her on his motorcycle and like the there's a fun little chase, and she's like trying to lose him, but kind of laughing. She's trying to kill him, is what she's trying to do. <laughs> He's a kid. He didn't know how to ride a motorcycle anyway. You know? <laughs> then the Ragnar's goons catch up to them, and it turns into a real battle. They end up being able to defeat the goons and then meet up. But what I couldn't get over was did his because he they stop and he says, "Oh wow, that was close." She's like, "Yeah, you're an idiot. I don't know why you were doing this. I'll get in. Let's go." He gets in the car and they drive away. What about his friend's motorcycle? <laughs> Did he just leave it on the side of the road in the middle of the I desert? Yes, because they never talk about it again. No. But the friend has the motorcycle <laughs> in the end. So, Does he even know where to tell his friend where it is? I don't know. <laughs> don't worry. I'm sure he has like some kind of um, device on it where he can find like GPS on it. You know, GPS in the 80s was a thing, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was a beeping. It was a red light with a beep that beeps, and then it's hot and cold. As you get closer to it, it would beep <laughs> So if you're faster. like 20 miles away, <laughs> beeping's kind of low. <laughs> it's like in Harry Davis and the Marlboro Man, where you just like kind of stumble around, but all of a sudden the beepy thing comes back on. <laughs> <laughs> so Stargrove and Danja get captured. They go, they take them back to the ranch, not to Ragnar's hideout, but instead back to the ranch. They're going to torture Stargrove. They take him back to the ranch. Yes. They take her to some... Ceramics factory. Some factory, <laughs> yeah. So I was I don't know if I was the only one, but I was really uncomfortable with that scene with Stargrove where they were like whipping him and stuff. But like, it was really uncomfortable. Because like, think about it. He's actually a kid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they yeah. were beating him with a... They were beating him... Like they had him down like on the table and they're beating him with a whip and stuff and he's crying. It's like this is really uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, because he's he's technically he a child. He's like sixteen or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. And there and then finally he he has a moment where he snaps and realizes like he's looking at the picture of his dad and him together, or is it just his dad? Just his dad. It's this really Oh, it's that one in the car, really huh? Cool picture of his dad in a in a convertible. <laughs> yeah. So then he sees his dad and he realizes that like I'm a Stargrove and he he fights some back. He all of a sudden he knows how to do karate, even though like Jim Cotta maybe you know <laughs> Maybe it's Jim Cotta because it's Jim Speaking of another you should watch it. <laughs> <laughs> what I love in this scene is that he gets up, I've had enough, that's it, I'm gonna fight. And he calls one of them stupid, and then the other one pet. And the guy, that guy goes fat and he like looks down at himself. <laughs> Harsh. <laughs> Harsh words. <laughs> yeah, I know. They could have given him some better lines than that, but <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> the point is, he fights him. He's able to win and find his dad's sex dungeon. Well, yeah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> and he also finds out where they're holding her. It's this giant oven. Pretty much. It's the giant kiln. Yeah, it's just this big oven. They have her strapped down. They're gonna, they're, they don't plan to torture her to get information on her they're just gonna kill her there yeah yeah they're just gonna like light, they're just gonna light her on fire <laughs> friend and sargro show up they like shoot their way through which by the way the friend knows how to shoot guns he's got all kinds of flamethrowers <laughs> he is having the thrill of a lifetime he's dressed ridiculous 
he has that grenade launcher thing that's the homemade grenade mm -hmm. launcher thing he takes so much joy in firing that thing and killing multiple people he loves it he loves he thirsts for blood i think people should be <laughs> concerned about boarding schools i mean if your kid's at a boarding school building that <laughs> <laughs> Star Grove also great with a gun. Knows how to reload it. Yeah, I mean, fire off the. Hip. He didn't know his dad was a was a secret agent until like five hours ago, but he figured it out. <laughs> He's a trooper. He got it. <laughs> Reason why we love B movies, these these trash movies, is that a they're a lot of fun. The storylines mm -hmm. end up meandering. There's all these subplots that end up going nowhere characters that don't mean anything weird lines you've got a gigantic dick <laughs> <laughs> like that kind of stuff those things come up in these b movies it's bad writing stories that don't go anywhere all, it makes them a lot of fun the second thing is the filming yeah and a lot of times in filming it's not really in filming it's in editing things slip through editing <laughs> all the time because they don't have that much money or time to go through all the editing and they or don't they don't have very many people that are good at <laughs> editing apparently <laughs> So at the end of the scene, when they do rescue Danja and they go, Sargo gets on the motorcycle and Danja and the friend get in that dune buggy thing and they drive off to the left hand side of the screen. There's just this guy he's standing not, there. Yeah. And he's not clearly not part of the gang because he's not wearing any like ridiculous garb or he's not have a crazy hair. He's like a regular guy. It looks like he just works at the factory. <laughs> Blue jeans, white shirt, yeah. and a hat yeah. holding a stick. Holding a stick. And it's like, I don't think that guy was supposed to be in the scene. <laughs> but you know what? We're going to go with it because we ain't got time to cut him out. <laughs> you know what we can do? Cut it really fast so it's not on screen <laughs> for that long. But we saw it. <laughs> oh, we saw it. And we, and we went <laughs> back and looked at it. Yeah. yeah, we do that all the time. Did he just say what I think he said? <laughs> That. Who was that guy standing there? Why right is that there? guy standing there with a two by four and they have guns and like rocket launchers and what, what is going he's on? And he's like, hmm. he's like, God damn, I have a lot of crap to clean up now. Look at this mess they're making in my pottery warehouse. I imagine in editing, they got to that part where they were putting it together and they like, they had to stop and go, wait a minute, wait, back up. God damn it, Bill. No. He was in 300 <laughs> shots in this movie. He's constantly <laughs> just off to the side. We keep telling him, stand behind the camera. There yeah, he is. Exactly. Now we can't refilm Now we scene. can't do it. Oh, well. Leave him in. No, they'll never notice he's not dressed like everyone else. <laughs> Maybe you'll never see the person there. <laughs> <laughs> so now they're going to run off. They go back to Carruthers. Wax, talk to Ruth. And he wants to use Sargrove and Dancha as bait to lure Ragnar out, out of the farm. So they're going to set up this scenario. Where it looks like Danja and Sargrove are just hanging out at the house together. Then Ragnar and his goons are going to try and get them, but then they're going to be able to capture Ragnar. But Ragnar has other plans. He's going to bring in body doubles and sneak Danja and Sargrove out, which is in the helicopter, which I guess no one saw, maybe, or I don't know what's going on I, when it comes to that scene. Like, why? no, but he's Carruthers, so he what, he's still a good guy. So that is part of it. Mm, that yeah. was all that so was always part of the plan to come in in his corruption yeah. and they're like okay whatever. yeah that that was part of the plan so he set it up so that he would be like the person they would go with mm -hmm. but he's crooked so yeah this is all his plan because the other guy who works with the i don't know what his name is the other it was like the boss he worked with the dad with senior and he's like telling him like i don't know what we're gonna do and then carruthers has this big plan we'll we'll get a decoy and then we'll fly him out in a helicopter and then come to find out he's the bad guy yeah, we find out that Ragnar at Carruthers is Ragnar. But before we get there, we have a very interesting scene with sex with a minor. <laughs> <laughs> She's like seducing him. She's sunbathing, topless. She's looking at him. He can't take it. He's eating many apples and throwing them on the ground nervously. <laughs> Finally, he can't take it anymore. She seduces him. They have sex. And we're like, this is at this point. We're like, okay, but is he really in high school? Because this is kind of sick now. Yes. Yes. There's if you can't determine what his age is, and she is I mean, seduction is an understatement. She's forcing him to do it practically. <laughs> <laughs> and then, as I mentioned while we were watching it, they missed a huge opportunity in the music. This should have been the music for this scene should have been Phil Collins against all odds. <laughs> it was in fact not Phil Collins against all odds. And so that's in against all odds. We rewound it and I put against <laughs> all odds on speaker so that we could listen to the song because it was a better song for the scene. Now speaking of you yeah, know you should watch it that we'll probably get to at some point in time against all odds. Yes. 
or the better version in Tequila Sunrise. Of course. Yeah, that is the better version. <laughs> Mel Gibson, Kurt Russell, please tell me where you go wrong in that. <laughs> See, the problem is with Against All Odds is that it's got Jeff Bridges. It's quality okay. Jeff Bridges. Um, I thought we were going to go young, somewhere bad here. Not attractive Jeff Bridges. <laughs> yes. Right. But it's got, what's his stupid face? James as Woods. Fact, James Woods. And I can't watch another thing with James Woods. Well, maybe, I mean, maybe video drum. But I can't watch anything else with James Woods in it ever again. Because he's not that. I think he really was that character in Against All Odds. Yeah, this huge <laughs> ass. <laughs> I thought you were going to say something bad about Jeff Bridges, and I was going to have to go crazy. <laughs> we were going to fight. <laughs> okay, so we're at the final scene. They're at the dam. Yep. They're at gonna, the dam. <laughs> they're going to contaminate the water, but the police are closing in too close, and so they're going to go do it via briefcase on the road but first they're going to have some kind of fight to the death in the pit <laughs> oh yes that's right that's in the pit and then they've got they've got them in the pit the, they've got her and uh junior in the pit and they're like chained together and they're just like harassing them and junior starts making jokes about every about ragnar and how like oh, i can't believe and being a man being a man and he starts making jokes about the other guys and stuff like oh I thought you guys were all in the same team together. And what's it like to do this, this, and this? And they get mad at him, and they start to fight him, and he ends up fighting other people, and it tries to go it goes off and derails the whole plan that Ragnar has. Well, he's gonna. He says, "I want to fight you," and then when the guy comes down, he does like a backwards somersault and is able to get a gun. Yeah. And then shoot Mortal Kombat guy. Yeah. And then start shooting other people. And he has at that point, he has no problems just just massacring. Yeah, I know. And everyone around him. <laughs> And that's when the, the rest of the police show up. They start doing the same thing. There's a guy on a Gatling gun mounted in the helicopter, and he is just mowing people down. <laughs> so it's kind of like Miami Bison. <laughs> no, no survivors. No survivors. <laughs> don't don't count on anyone being surviving at the end of this episode. Though. There will be no court proceedings. Why? Because everyone's dead. <laughs> <laughs> and Crockett killed them all. <laughs> Ragnar escapes in a semi-truck. You know, like you do. <laughs> yeah, he's faster than everyone in the semi-truck. <laughs> he just drives away from them. He's not like Optimus Prime or anything. He's just a regular truck. <laughs> <laughs> then there's a final showdown between Ragnar and Stargrove. It, it's actually kind of a letdown with that final battle. Ends up being because Ragnar tries to pull this move with, oh no, you beat me. I'm, I'm a woman. How can you beat a woman? And then tries to stab him with the well, with fingernail. Him with his fingernail, but Star Wars is able to throw him over the dam. And then instead of defusing the bomb, apparently to stop it, you don't need to deprogram it. All you need to do is blow it up. Which doesn't make any sense because it's a bomb. It's, yeah, it's also not supposed to be a bomb. It's supposed to be contaminating the water. <laughs> so is the dam stopping the contaminated water from going, or are they going to introduce the <laughs> contamination into like what is? I don't know what's the contamination. I don't think it's a bomb. I think it's I think it's a computer that's supposed to start. Oh, the gotcha. Contamination. So, process. so that makes sense. You blow it up, then it doesn't get to start the process. Yeah, but that's not how computers work. Like, but that is in the movie. <laughs> I mean, we. He's Ragnar. He can't even, he doesn't know how to ride a motorcycle. He doesn't know anything about technology. He thought the Mad Max guys were going to pull this off for him. <laughs> Throws Ragnar over the edge. They're able to blow up the computer. Everyone is safe. I'm sorry, but I think it's funny that that's the part where you're like, that's completely unbelievable. <laughs> Not this kid that does gymnastics on the weekends can go around and shoot people. <laughs> also, that he got to sleep with vanity. I mean, <laughs> none of that is a believable thing. Then in the final moments, he's saying goodbye to everyone. Maybe I'll be back around. Everyone's on the way. Great job. He's like, hey, uh, thanks for letting me lose my virginity to you. I might call you someday. Yeah, that's basically. <laughs> she's like, all right, cool. By the way, you're a lot smaller than your dad. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Just saying your dad didn't cry. When we yes. <laughs> so by the time we get to the end of this movie, Stargrove has gone from child to male. <laughs> it's gross. <laughs> He's made a couple kills, had sex with Vanity, used the bomb. My only question is, does she still get to live on the farm? Or is he like, get the hell out of my farm now? I mean, she had a place to live. Like, where's she going to go now? She can't go to Carruthers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm worried about her, okay? <laughs> she clearly makes poor decisions. Yeah, she does. <laughs> and that's that's the movie. We've seen it twice now. 
and even explaining it and seeing and hearing how ridiculous it is. <laughs> it's really ridiculous. Be like, yeah, I like it. <laughs> yeah, I will say I was very pleased. I do not like this might be controversial, but I do not like musicals. I don't oh, like yeah. music. I do not like movies that are like every other scene is going to be like they're going to sing and, and having Gene Simmons in it. They had the opportunity to be like, we can make this like a all rock musical. Yeah, all, yeah, three, all three, three of them. They could have made it, and they did not. Thank God, because that would have just ruined it. <laughs> ruined it completely. Yeah, in my for my final thoughts on this and why I think you should watch it. Why, if you're listening to this, you should go watch this movie. One is free. If you have access to Amazon Prime, <laughs> if you have yeah. a Prime account, it's free. You don't have to pay for it. Yes. Also, don't pay for it. <laughs> you can watch it. Yeah, don't pay for it. <laughs> right, let's get that straight. <laughs> but this is the definition of it's so bad, it's good type movie because it never takes itself too seriously. There's a bunch of meandering subplots that don't make any sense. There's characters and the lines that they say that don't make any sense, and it makes it all so much fun <laughs> to go through and there's a difference between a movie that's trying to be good ends up being bad and none of the people who are affiliated with it recognize yes because then you kind of feel bad for them You're like mm, you made a stinker you made a stinker and you thought it was good and you put a lot of like people like these big budget movies and they make them and they're just not good and yeah and the rest, this cast in this movie, you feel like they know what's happening. Yeah. Mm, this is the kind of movie that it is. Okay, I'll cheese it up in some scenes. I can have mm -hmm. it up here and there. They're more than willing to go extra for the cheesy lines and stuff like that. Well, I hope Gene Simmons was that's what he was trying to do. Because <laughs> we got problems if not. <laughs> I mean, let's face it. He makes the movie, right? Mm -hmm. They could not have made that movie with a different person. No, he if is it was some other bad guy. That movie is a total flop. No, yeah, watch it. he really is. He's the epitome of a villain. He's really he's really good at it too. Mm -hmm. So I will say that. Like I know we're making fun of it, but his portrayal of the of the villain is what makes that movie. And the villain is so different. Yes, right. Very flamboyant. Mm -hmm. Very over the top. Very. Um, like crazy outfits and yeah he, and he really leans into it yeah you can tell he's never awkward or uncomfortable with it nope. at any point in time he really leans into it it makes his character that much better yeah and he's really menacing too for being like the mm -hmm. half of it he's wearing lingerie he's mm -hmm. yeah. he's scary <laughs> so the it's one of those movies that is so bad it's good and even john stamos has said that about the movie Yes. He has said years later, he's like, yeah, I was in that movie. It's one of those movies where it's so bad, it's good. Yep. That's what like. And that's what, that's what we love about these movies is that even the actors, they recognize what, what it is. Just accept it for what it is. Oh, well, some of them do. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't think Jeff Wincott does. <laughs> <laughs> I will stand by that statement for every movie where it's like, it makes it so much fun that they understand what kind of movie it is and they lean in and they're willing to be cheesy with it. And have some fun. I say that about, and when they're too serious and they get mad, that people don't understand it. That that's kind of annoying. I'll say that about every one of them, except for Tommy Wiseau. His staunch belief that the room is a great movie is what, is what makes, makes it, it fantastic. <laughs> I mean, it is a great movie. Do not be insulting Tommy right now. We do not want to make him mad. <laughs> He will sue you and you and will not yeah, you know. exactly. and he will not give you any free underwear. You will not I'll get order it. the mask. If I order the underwear, I can get a mask. I want the mask. Well, why didn't you order those underwear then? <laughs> and that's gonna do it for us this week on Go with the Heat. We hope you enjoyed this episode. We would love to hear from you. Email us go with the heat at gmail.com. Check out that website, go with the heat.com. You can find all the ways to contact us. And we would love, like I said, we would love to hear from you. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I think there's a Tumblr still out there somewhere. Tumblr's still a thing. I think it is. You might be able to go. Maybe don't leave a message there because I don't I don't think I'll see it. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. I take that one back. But of course, the best way to support us is to email us, go with the heat at gmail.com. You can go to that website, find all the other ways that you can support us, including giving us money. I mean, hey, we'll take you want to give us money. We'll take your money. <laughs> we will take your money. You can send it to us. There's a PayPal, like QR code. You just scan that. And it'll send us money. <laughs> There's a square cash. You use square cash. Hey, cash Fridays. You can just, just cash us on Fridays. Like it's, it, it's, it's all right there. Patreon. We got Patreon. I haven't updated it. So I'll still mind me like stuff. But if you want to skinny tie in a business card, we, we got still you. got them. <laughs> support step number two go to your podcast plot, podcatcher platform of choice. Leave us a review with us five stars. No one is going to know that I told you to go to the website, go to your podcast and give us five stars. They will never know. 
also because they're never going to read the review because no one ever reads the reviews. So I want you to go in there in the review and instead of writing a review for the show, I want you to go in there and tell us how Carruthers worked his way to be one of the greatest <laughs> international spies, <laughs> but was secretly ragged on the entire time. That took years of doing that. <laughs> I mean, he's in charge of the spies. Yeah, it took years. Give us his backstory. How did he become big at GCHQ or NSA <laughs> Whatever it or is, yeah. CIA to get into that position, all while wearing that rubber mask? <laughs> <laughs> your story there in your podcatcher in the review. John will be back in our next one. Maybe we'll see how things go. Might just be us for Angel Town. It, it, it might be another you should watch it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed the show and we'll see you all next time.